friends, so today is going to be an exciting, fun day. I have finally, after so long, remembered to buy some envelopes. Um, I also have a small seed order here, which I'm yet to organize. I have written out my garden plan for the autumn winter garden. Um, I'm in Australia, so it's becoming into the autumn season now. So we'll go through that, as well as showing you the seeds that I saved from summer, from our summer garden, um, this is why I needed the envelopes because they are overdue to be packaged in envelopes. To be honest, I'm not feeling the best. I've got TMI, I've got a period from hell. My legs are so crampy, but I want to still get things done. So I was moping around yesterday, didn't do anything yesterday. And I was excited about this project and then my period came. So then I'm just like, crack the shits, didn't do anything. And as well as getting this done, I want to get this done first. I did just pot around in the kitchen, get it tidied up. Um, as you can see, I've got some dishes here, which that's probably not going to get put away, to be honest. That can wait until tomorrow. But as well as doing this, we will also get dinner all prepped and marinated. So tonight's dinner is going to be a Mediterranean grilled chicken with Greek salad and a dill sauce. I'm going to make enough chicken for tonight and tomorrow and to have some in the freezer. I'm just going to do a big batch at once and then... I don't need to think about that. Same as the dill sauce, that'll be enough for the week, and the Greek salad will be enough for the week as well. But more so today and tomorrow. Um, we're originally going to have it four times this week, but the last couple of nights we've just got a takeaway because I haven't been feeling the best. So doing something little is better than nothing at all, but I want to start with the seeds because this is what excites me. Preparing the food is more of a dreaded task. I mean, it's exciting, but just how I'm feeling, am I dreading it? But this is like really exciting for me, so I'm gonna get this done first and then keep on the momentum, get dinner done, and then the thought of having dinner all done for today and tomorrow sounds really good. So I wanna make sure we get that done. I'll go get our seeds and we'll start with this envelope. So I'll pop this aside for now and then we can come back and we'll go through the new seeds that I have purchased, which is not many because my family and Nick have gone crazy. Well, more so Nick, to be honest, but also my family's gone crazy in gifting me seeds. Um, so I didn't have to buy that many seeds, which is fantastic. So we'll put that aside now and we'll go collect the seeds. So here I just got our seeds from outside in our outdoor laundry. So it's technically indoors, but our laundry is outside with no door. Um, so these are our seeds that we've collected out there, as well as some seeds I've collected in the kitchen here. So these ones are different because I collected these seeds from the vegetables that we were using in the kitchen, hence why they're just in the kitchen. And these seeds are different because these are harvested from the actual plant. These aren't, these aren't seeds, these are our onions that we grew. Our whole onion harvest from, I think it was 60 onion seeds that I planted. They definitely need to get used up soon. Um, I harvested them probably two months ago now. They are making quite a mess. So here is our onions from six months, I mean 60 seeds or 60 onion starts I should say. Um, yeah, this is going to go into a pie. They do need to get used up so hopefully we'll make that pie next week together. As well as some leeks. It's just going to be like a garden produce pie, like a chicken and leek pie I think. Um, using herbs, onions, leeks from the garden which is really good. Now in the rest of here, we have corn, corn on the cob. Um, in this little, I just put it in a shot glass to keep it separate. In here, we have coriander seed. My plan with this was to grow enough coriander seed to make the spice. I have four, 13 individual seeds is what I managed. So nowhere near enough coriander, but that's fine. We will plant this out actually soon, to be honest. And the rest of these seeds, all these black seeds here, which there is probably hundreds, are the Empress Yellow Sunflower Seeds. Oh, sorry about the sliding going in and out. It's hot, so I don't want my blind all the way up. And I guess the sun's just going in and out from the shades. So, these ones I am so excited about. Our cayenne chili plant, incredible. Absolutely incredible. So, I don't know how many seeds I have here, but I have two napkins worth of... Um, the cayenne chili seeds that we've saved from the chilies that we grew 
uh, which is the, it's either Joe or it's John. I think it might be John. John Red Long Cayenne, as well as some of the Greasy Lizzie Tomato Seeds. Um, I will plant these seeds, to be honest. I wouldn't purchase that again, but I will with the few seeds I got here. And then underneath here, we have some bean seeds. So underneath here, we have some bean seeds. These are from our Purple King, what are they called? Purple King bean seeds. Um, this I just took from the beans that we were using and it worked fine. Or I can harvest them from the plant now. We have dried up pods on the plant. That's how they're more traditionally harvested is once a plant dies back and dries out, the leftover pods, you get the beans. Um, these work, probably not going to save these to be honest because I don't think I will be doing that plant again. Um, it wasn't my favorite. It was fine and it was good, but it definitely was not my favorite. And there's some other ones I'm really keen to try and I don't have that much space to try like 10 different varieties in one season. Um, but it's nice to know that I, I learned how to save it. But yeah, I probably won't be keeping them. And here, now I'm a bit closer. So this napkin and this napkin here is our chili seeds. And then these few napkins, I mean these few seeds on this napkin, here's the tomato. I think we'll start with the corn seed. So this is a corn cob that has just dried up. It dried up mostly on the plant, but it wasn't completely dried up. And all I'm going to do is just use my thumb and they're just going to fall off. And that's when you know these seeds are ready to harvest from the cob and can go into storage. So very little pressure. And they're just coming off. And then we're probably with these three cobs, they're gonna get hundreds of seeds as well, which is fantastic. These are smaller seeds than the corn seeds I did plant. So maybe I should have saved some bigger cobs, but hopefully there's enough in these small seeds to be able to make plants. But this is my first time saving seeds of any kind. Um, so we'll see if it's a success or not. I will probably, when it comes down to corn planting season, I'll probably plant, I mean, I'll probably purchase some more corn seeds just in case these were to fail, but we'll trial with these ones first. All right, so here I've just done the three cobs. That's all I managed to save for the seeds were three cobs. I attempted more cobs. I think it was about 20 cobs in total of the smaller because with the corn plant, it produces its main cob and then these are like the little side shoots. I left these side shoots to have a seed, but like I said, these are definitely smaller seeds than the corn that I planted. So maybe I should have saved some main cobs, but a lot of them ended up with bug damage um, and pollination just was way less or less than not. So as you can see here on the cob, this is where all that seed I've just taken. And see here, that is non-pollinated corn. You can kind of see the difference there. This one where it's more yellow, that's the pollinated. So we can still pick these few seeds, but right next to it, I mean, it's still kind of yellow, but you can just kind of see the difference. Yeah. So from that to right here. I'm a lot is, um, not, is not pollinated, so we don't want to save that. Alright, and I started off with corn because I was excited for it, but that was the only part that required some labour work to be safe. Everything else is just already there. So I think what I want to do with these envelopes is, see I harvest the seed in um, the end of last year, it would have been... Probably, it probably would have been December, I'd say. Oh no, was it January this year? I don't know when I actually harvested the seeds, but I'm putting them in the envelope now, which we're in March of this year. So I think that's the date I'm going to put on. I know these are just sweet corn with the variety. So I'll just do sweet corn, um, March, which is the third and 24. So although these potentially would have been harvested last year 
I think, yeah, just to help me keep track, I'll just put the month and the date that I'm actually putting them in the envelope. So this is so fun to me. They're completely dry. And there is literally hundreds of seeds. Which is crazy. I thought having 20 plants and I was like, I'm probably not going to get enough seed, but I'm kind of glad that they all didn't work. Because that would have been a lot. Even with that sunflower, all those sunflower seeds, when we get to that, that was from one sunflower head, which is crazy. So I'm going to share them around with family and friends if they want some yellow sunflower seeds. So definitely not needing that many sunflowers. But I am so excited to have a field of sunflowers. I do need to do some research with the sunflower seeds, to be honest. Well, we'll talk about the sunflowers. We'll do sunflowers next since I soon want to talk about that. But you can see in here now is all of those corn seeds. Um, I thought these had the pure and the sticky, but it's the leafy ones. You know what? I probably am going to seal it. Yeah. Wait. I know. <laughs> it is a pure. I was just about to lick it. So. Squeeze the air out. I mean, it's an envelope anyway, so it's not going to be like that well vacuum sealed or anything but this is still fine it's going to give it some more protection than having it out on this tray in my outdoor laundry but that is fun all right so sunflowers i'm just going to move our coriander seeds aside these sunflowers i don't think they're edible because they are black I believe, you know what, let's just test one. I believe I started doing some research. I'm not, I haven't really finished it because I'm not quite sure if you, man. But if we crack one open, so I'm just gonna squish it. Okay, yeah. This should be the edible seed inside as long as it's not black. So. Okay. But that's not like the sunflower seeds you were to buy. So that's like the inside piece there. So yeah, I don't think these are the edible type. Um, I wouldn't mind looking into that, to be honest. I would plant these. I wouldn't mind looking into what is the edible sunflower seed type to snack on. But I know this variety is yellow in press. Sunflower. And again, we're in March of 2024. So I'm going to plant these just for the pure beauty of having sunflowers in the garden. But I do think I won't save any more of these seeds from what, hopefully, if they do work and germinate and we do get sunflowers. Um, because I really wouldn't mind getting these sunflowers where you can eat the seed that we harvest. But this will just definitely be fun for next year to have so many sunflowers. And to think that the sunflower packet only started with 20 or 25 seeds. Crazy. And I did plant all of them and only two germinated. And I saved the seed from one. There we go, our first sunflower packet. I need to, yeah, there's too much in this. Completely full of sunflowers. So now we're doing the coriander, the very sm sad small amount of coriander seeds. But like, actually, you know what? Because these will literally be planted in, I'd say, a week or two. I'm not, I'm just gonna keep them how they are. Um, Cause what I was, because what I was just about to say is it will be handy to get like the mini envelopes for very small amounts like this. But we'll just leave it. I'm trying to be quiet. But having smaller envelopes would have been handy for these seeds, but that's fine. So here I'm doing, see, I don't remember if it's the John or the Joe, but I remember it's a long red chili, cayenne chili. So I'm just going to do the J... LR for the Joa John long bread and then I'll write cayenne 
And these two I harvested at two different times, but they all can go in the same envelope because they all came from the same plant. Um, and they just have today's date on it because that's the day we're doing it. And I am excited, so excited to plant these chilies. So am I. So you can see our chili seeds down in there and I'll seal this up. I might even yet still keep some more chilies when we use them, um, but then I'll need the drying out process and I can just make another envelope. I got plenty of these envelopes. So our last seed that we managed to save was our Greasy Lizzie tomatoes, which again, I will plant these just to see if they will germinate. The production of the plant, fantastic. But the tomatoes themselves, production was also fantastic, but they were small. Um, I don't know, I just expect them to be bigger. It's probably my part of lack of fertilization. I definitely know I probably lack the fertilization. But also on some gardening groups, Oh, end of date. Uh, what are we the third? So I'm going in groups with this variety for this year. It just seems a lot of people were having issues with the size of the actual tomatoes. So that is why I wouldn't repurchase this variety. But like I said, because I managed to save these seeds, they produced a lot. Nick ate them. They were delicious. I don't eat tomatoes fresh. And I don't think I ended up cooking with any. Um, but. Nick liked them to eat them, so we will try again with these seeds just to see if we can get them to germinate and give them a second year, which that's just so fun and exciting to me. And like I said, all we got left are these beans. It's just cool that I've learned how to save these beans two different ways, because like I said, right here from all the cooking beans and out of my plant, I can definitely go and harvest some beans right now but I'm not going to because I definitely don't want this variety in my garden. Not only next year, but I think in, just in general in future, it's not a bean that I really do care to plant again. Now we've got these five packagings of seeds. To be honest, I don't know where I'm going to store them because they're not going to fit in any of my storage seed storage boxes. So I'm going to figure out somewhere to put them, somewhere in a cool, dark, dry place. Um, these I'll probably just put back out in my laundry where they have been sitting just like I said for a couple of weeks and that's when we're going to start planting seeds, starting seed blocking. I literally ordered seedling trays and a seed blocker earlier today and now we'll go through these seeds which is not many. So I ordered these from Happy Valley Seeds and the ones that I purchased and I'll add a picture here so you can see what they looked like. So we got the shelling pea willow. So these are like a garden pea. I know a lot of gardeners don't like shelling peas because it's time consuming. Peas as the garden pea is my favorite vegetable. So I'm happy. Hopefully I can grow an abundant of these peas. I'm happily will sit there for hours shelling peas to get that fresh garden pea in my freezer. The other thing we got is a radish. I know I've spoken about radishes before. Radishes I'm not the biggest fan of, but these are a daikon radish. So my intentions with this is to pickle it, can it, have it on the pantry shelf, and then we'll make barmies, which is a favorite in the family. Um, so when family members make it, I know my mother-in-law loves to make barmies, I can gift her some homegrown pickled, home can um, daikon radish, and obviously we will enjoy it like that. Um, same with some aunties and uncles as well, they enjoy barmies. It would just be cool, I feel like, to something that I could gift, knowing it's an ingredient that so many people in the family do enjoy, for specifically barmies as well. These ones is the onion by letter white pickling onions. There's 60 seeds in this packet. Nick gifted me this for Christmas, and these will grow into your tiny white pickled onions, which I think is great. But the fact that 60, one seed will produce one onion. And if I'm going to go for the effort of growing them to then pickle and can them, I wanted a bit more, I was thinking about going a bit more crazy, but I thought I'll just do 120 seeds, see if it works out, 
and then maybe next growing season that's when we can really go crazy with those seeds if they do work out like how i'm intending and a beetroot seed because i used all my beetroot seeds last season so we want to get that going again i got the beetroot bull's blood not the variety i used last time last time was just baby beet and the golden circle i believe um variety so just something new and be fun i wouldn't mind baby beets as well again but they were sold out so when they're back in sale i'll get that and then have the two varieties all right so i was going to put them in my containers but they're not organized they're all organized for my plant so i'm going to pack up actually no i said i was going to show you the garden plan i forgot about that so garden plan but yeah my seeds they're not organized i i will deal with that later because i don't know what i'm doing so garden plan here we go <laughs> This is in the middle here. You know what? Let's use this as our little pointer. We'll go through this quick and then we can start preparing our dinner. In this middle area here is what we attempted to grass. We only grew reeds. We did start to grow grass, but the weeds grew thicker, stronger, faster, and overtook the grass that we did grow. Um, so now we've opted for some mini raised beds. I'm hoping to fit six. So here we have herbs leafy greens and new new is the new <laughs> seeds that nick have purchased for me i've got no idea what they are i've never heard of them i have looked them up can't remember them because they're such unique different types of seeds so they're all going to go on a bed together and that's like our little experimental bed and then here is our in-ground area so at the front here this is where i had my capsicum tomatoes and then nothing really on this side oh i had beetroots here this past season so now we're going to have carrot i'm going to be building an arch here and at the back that's going to happen later that hasn't happened yet so that's going to be fun and exciting and that's where i'm going to grow these shelling peas across this arch and possibly this back arch as well and on this side we'll have more root crops which will be our beetroots turnip and swede on this side this is where we have the cornfield all of this is going to be garlic along this side so this is where our garden shed is this is all going to be different varieties of onions and along the back we're not going to plant anything we're going to keep that open and blank for corn so we can do i'm hoping to do about three concessions of corn it grew so quick for me i really think if i time it out right and have the space and the soil ready to go i can just keep going and keep going with corn production and lengthwise is longer than up and down here and yeah last year we've done our corn here and it definitely was not enough corn here I have our trellis bed, which has the trellis. That's where we had the purple king beans and we kind of got some cucumbers growing. That's where we're going to do snow peas. I'm going to build a new bed, which is going to be a flower bed, purely for cut flowers, which is going to be fun. And in each corner of the in-ground as well, I'm going to be putting in different varieties of flowers, just in-ground, just to give it some more color and life and attract those nice insects around the vegetables so that's our plan we'll see how successful that becomes but let me pack up the seed stuff and then we'll get our dinner prepared all right i'm not gonna lie today is a new day yesterday all i got done was well like i said before i filmed i did pot around tidy up the kitchen and i and then i started filming and we done those seeds together so that was great i did go to work so i wasn't completely lazy all day <laughs> but i just i needed to rest my body just needed to rest so listen to my body i am feeling amazing today today we are going to finally get around to actually prepping our dinner i'm making enough for tonight and for tomorrow so here i got a lebanese cucumber i purchased three cucumbers because our cucumber vine stopped growing but now we've got baby cucumbers growing i mean i could harvest them if i didn't have this i could go out and harvest them but they can wait a few more days anyway to grow a bit longer so that's fine and i've got these ones in the fridge that needs to be used up so i'm putting it in a power dish because all my bowls are finished i'm just going to use half of this red onion this half will go back into the fridge and this is just going to be our greek salad mix so i'm going to chop all the veggies have it all mixed up in here and then we'll make the dressing separate. I'm not gonna dress this salad, we'll dress it when it comes down to eating. Um, but because I want this to last us today and tomorrow, we'll take out a portion that we'll eat tonight, dress that, if that makes sense. So 
We've got cucumber and now we're doing red onion. Actually, there is something in the garden we can go and harvest together, which is a capsicum to go into this salad. Just got a few cherry tomatoes here. I don't eat the tomatoes, so I'll just cut them in half and I will just not scoop them in my portion of the salad. So these will be for Nick. Oh, and by the way, I got the same dress on because I chucked this dress on to film yesterday. And as soon as I stopped, well, I went out and went to work and all before filming, I um, was in my pajamas. So this was literally worn for not even an hour. So I just chucked the same dress on today. I would chuck olives in here as well. We don't have any, but we'll go out now and get a cucumber from the garden. Not cucumber. We will go out now and get a capsicum from the garden. Because I'm walking outside, just a little bit to chuck into the compost. It is so hot. So one thing I don't think I've shared with you guys, I pruned this. You can see it's got new growth. Pruned it, fertilized it. And since doing that, so many chilies are forming it. Look at the teeny tiny little baby ones. We got red ones ready to harvest. Well, actually, that's going to be wrinkly. I do have to come out and harvest this. But this is the one chili plant. And it is crazy good. And here are our capsicums we're going to get today. These are all droopy. It's just because it's so hot. So let's get this one. Look at that, that is the biggest capsicum I've grown. Beautiful. She's got another one in there. I think that's about it for this plant, to be honest. There is some little buds, so we'll see if they develop. Otherwise, we do have another capsicum plant here with a capsicum growing. Um, these zucchinis, I'm just letting them die out. They are done, same as this tomato, done. <laughs> Yeah, stoked with that. It is hot out there. Capsicum. I hear you, girl. This variety, I don't remember. No. Well There's bugs in me capsicum. Mm, oh. I hate it. I hate the bugs. So, I know it's still be fine to eat, just scoop out the bugs, whatever, but it just gives me the eevee jeebies and just knowing those bugs, I can't, I can't do it. I can't. It does seem wasteful to some people. I will remove the bugs, I'll wash it, get the bugs draining down in the ocean, not the ocean, down the sink. What am I on about? We're going to the beach once I finish this, that's why I got ocean on my mind. I will get re remove the bugs. And I'll chuck it in the compost so it's not complete waste, but I just I can't bring myself to eat it if there is bugs in it. I'm so annoyed as well because this is like the perfect thickness for a capsicum, but see right there, the little crawler. There's another one right there, a baby baby right in there. In this half, yeah, there's even more bugs in there. Um, I can't see it now. It was somewhere amongst up there at least. So I'm so sad because it was such a perfect capsicum. To go with the Greek salad, we need to make up some dressing. So I kind of eyeball this, just depends on how much I make. And this dressing will be fine in the fridge for up to a month. So we want to start off with about half oil, half red wine vinegar. So if you want to make just enough just to dress your salad. Obviously you don't need much dressing to dress your salad, just do a couple of tablespoons of each. But I just kind of eyeball. Make half and half. And you can see the separation between the oil and the vinegar. So you can see the separation there with the olive oil and then the red wine vinegar at the bottom. Normally it'll be lemon juice. We do have lemon juice, but we've got these fresh limes that do need to be used up. So we'll just juice the lime in. I should have rolled it first. Put half a lime. Yeah, for this amount, I'll just do half the lime. It's nice and juicy. 
So why do I think I've made this using lime juice, substituting lemon juice for lime juice? The lemon we have is fresh lemon juice. Well, it's now frozen, but it was fresh lemon juice from my parents. Lemon tree that I preserved last like winter season. This can go back into the fridge next time you need a lime. We'll use that. These pinch pots as well. I know we went together to Kmart to purchase these. Love them. So, pinch of salt. I just do a tiny little pinch of salt. So, I don't want it salty, but salt does enhance the flavors. Garlic powder. We do want it quite heavy in the garlic. Can use fresh garlic. I just can't be bothered. So, garlic powder will do. And some black pepper. This as well, having black pepper pre done. That's probably the best part about all of it. And the last ingredient to make this a root salad dressing is some dried oregano leaves. So I'll give a good tablespoon worth. That's mixed herbs. Yeah. <laughs> oregano is one of those herbs I haven't tried to grow myself, but I really want to, considering we use so much of it purely to make this dressing. But then again, now we're coming into the cooler season, but we are in autumn now. Okay, so with this, just give it a shake. We are in autumn now, um, although it's still like summer, it is high 30s, low 40s for another week and a half yet. So I think we'll probably calm down on the roots out a little bit, but we've been enjoying it all spring and summer. So yeah, we'll just give it a nice shake. And then we go and pop it in the fridge, it's all done. Each time we use it, we'll take it out, shake it up, we'll use it. It's good to go for a month. So that's gonna last us for definitely today, tomorrow, the rest of the month. All right, so another thing to go with this chicken and, well, yeah, to go with the chicken is a sauce. I'm gonna do the sauce first, just because if I do the chicken now with this knife, chopping board, have to sanitize everything. If I do the sauce, and that's how I started with the salad, is I can just keep going one after another, do the chicken last, and then just do that one clean up. All right, so with the dill sauce, it calls for juice of half a lime, so that is perfect. We got that just from the dressing. I'm gonna be using, would, oh, smells so good. Would you want any fresh dill for eggs or whatever? Ah, oh, useful. All right, so with the dill, dill is a herb as well. I have tried to grow, I've been unsuccessful. I've had a start and tried from seed. Seed sprouts, but then just died. But also, I think I know where I went wrong. But we're just going to be plucking the thin bits. A little bit of stem is fine, but we mainly want this nice, light, fluffy stuff. But it is a herb that I don't use that often. Sure. But it smells incredible, so I do want to use it more. And what I'm thinking as well with this is we can be using it for our chicken, and because it's like a Mediterranean Greek flavors this obviously isn't tzatziki sauce but we maybe might make some euros next week to use up the rest of the sauce so we'll use this instead of tzatziki maybe oops that's a big stem there this also calls for fresh garlic and again i'm just going to use the garlic powder just i'm eager to get to the beat <laughs> plus garlic powder is just as good I mean, I really should use the fresh garlic considering we do have it, but. All right, so that's the only chopping we need to do with the sauce. So, Greek yogurt. Wanna check the date on this. So this expires at the end of this month. So I would say this is how good this sauce is going to last for. If your Greek yogurt only lasts for a week, probably only going good for a week, but these ingredients mixed with Greek yogurt, it wouldn't be like two days and then it'll be gross. It'll be fine, you'll just have to mix it up but that's generally i think with yogurt anyway so for this amount of dill i think we'll fill this up about three quarters of the way this is just a 500 ml jar what does the actual recipe says the recipe calls for a cup so i'll probably be making a bit over a cup actually did i want yogurt for something else I do feel like I had a recipe that called for yogurt, so I might stop there. Just so I have enough yogurt left for the other recipe. I think all the blueberry muffins I wanted to make. So now in our jar, we'll squeeze the rest of this lime. And 
and then we'll scoop in our dill. I know I shouldn't use the blade of my knife. I do want to get a stainless steel bed scraper. We're going to add in a pinch of pepper. The recipe actually doesn't call for pepper or salt, but again, salt just helps to enhance the flavor. I've just added in about a table of garlic powder. And again, we don't want it salty, so I'll just do a small pinch. What did I say? You said I just added about a table of <laughs> I don't realize I say things like this till. But... And then you need a live studio audience like myself. And now we'll just give this a nice mix. It smells so good and fresh. So that's what that's looking like. It smells really good. I'm just going to wrap the rim just so it's not messy when I put the linen ring on. Um, but now we've got this prepared, all the flavors are just going to be all cozy together and it will make it really, really good. So let's go back into the fridge. All right, so now I've got a big bowl. I'm just going to set that off to my side here. And our chicken. So I'm going to do all this chicken. It's about just under three kilos of chicken. Because again, we'll make it all, cut it all down to the sizes that we want it. And then we can freeze what we don't use. So I love having marinated chicken in the fridge um in the freezer we currently don't have any so i'm just going to trim up so i'm just going to trim up these chicken take up all the yucky bits that we wouldn't like to eat um oh there's a bone in my bonus chicken so mm -hmm. i'm going to move that so with chicken to have it as grilled chicken i like it nice and thin obviously not too thin but we want the pieces to be the same thickness so the individual piece Obviously, chicken is thicker on one side, thinner on the other side. So what I'm going to do is this thin piece. Probably just chop it off like that. You're always going to have it a bit more thicker, but that is a lot more better ratio. So these are always going to be the worst pieces, but that's fine. Now with this piece, we will half it. And that's a really nice thickness for on the grill, which this is how I intend to cook this chicken. This is a bit thick, so again, we'll half this again. So it all depends on the size of the chicken breast that you start with, but this is perfect. So I'm just gonna go along, trim up these chickens and just do it all. This piece of chicken has the tenderloin attached so that is just done as the one piece, that's fine. This is pretty clean chicken breast, it's a lot more flatter, so I'm just gonna cut it in half. The tail end will be one piece, and this piece I'll just half the one time. Whoops, just like that. So I'll keep going along, filling up the bowl, and then we'll marinate it all in the one time, separate it into the bags. We'll put a bag in the fridge for our dinner tonight and everything else can go into the freezer for future dinners. All right, so we have our mountain of chicken. We want to juice of one lime, so we use another lime, which is great. And we're also saving a freezer bag in the freezer for a vegetable stock, so just some scraps. Not all scraps, but some scraps. And it was actually mixed up. Yeah, I keep forgetting about it to add to it, to be honest. But the dill stems and the lime, we've added to that. So I'll add these lime to that bag as well. That's gonna be really nice for a vegetable broth. All right, because I got a lot of chicken here, I'm gonna double the spices that it calls for. So we'll do a total of a teaspoon of cardamom, teaspoon of paprika, which is pretty much everything we got left in here. It does call for half a teaspoon of nutmeg. We don't have nutmeg, so I'm just gonna use cinnamon as a substitute. But because it is quite strong, I'll just stick to about half a teaspoon. So I'm not doubling up that one. Oregano, again, a teaspoon. So we'll want two teaspoons. And when I do use fresh herbs, I like just to run them through my fingers just to kind of crush them up and open them up a bit. I don't know if it's a myth or not, but it's just what I got told enhances the flavor or brings out the flavor with fresh ingredients like fresh herbs. And we'll add in a pinch of salt. Because it's a lot of chicken, we'll do a couple of pictures. Do about a tablespoon of garlic powder, which is probably the rest in here, and a teaspoon of pepper. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Another thing to help distribute 
the herbs around we'll chuck in a good glug of olive oil and i'm gonna wear a glove normally i don't normally am ones to wear gloves but i do have sensitive skin especially on my hands so i'm just move my thing out of the way you know what as well because we're freezing these to go into a vegetable broth i'll move them out the way as well just in case chicken gets splattered or whatever and just move this chicken around and get it all nice evenly coated with all of our pieces there's a lot of pieces here so i'm just really happy and excited to get some marinated chicken again in the freezer i think i might add this to our meal plan next week is do another marinated chicken dish just so that we can start getting a out in our freezer we can start getting a few different flavors of marinated chicken so now what i've done we've got just under three kilos of meat so i will weigh them into about 500 gram portions that's plenty of meat for nick and i um so i got many chicken i just do that short as mediterranean i'll know what that means and the best before date that was written on the packet of chicken and the freezer date so this way when i pull them out the freezer i know i've got four days before that chicken would most likely then become off if it sits in the fridge so if I defrost it and let it sit in for four days, then unfortunately it would have to get chucked. But I don't see that happening. Sometimes it's a little bit more trickier when it is only like one day spare. If I don't get to it that night that I intend to. This one I've left blank because we'll use that for tonight's dinner. So I don't, so I don't need to write on that. And I just got my scales out. Like I said, I'll do 500 in each bag. I'll just set the bags over here. And just to help it be less mess, I will open up the bags and just roll it, that one down, just to protect this seal. And this way, sit up nicely on my scale. All right, so scales are on. I'm not gonna worry about tearing out this bag. It's going to weigh, what, a gram? Yeah, it weighs a gram, so that's fine. So some pieces are nice and big, some are smaller. So we'll just do a mixture of all the pieces in each bag. So 493, that's close enough because we don't even have a full three kilos worth of chicken anyway. All right, so now we're jumping into the future a little bit and I just thought I'll add in some clips of how I enjoy to cook and pull this meal together of what we've just finished preparing. So with the grilled chicken out on our grill slash barbecue on the hot plate side, I like to put the chicken on the hot plate for probably about 30 seconds just to get it covered to white and that part kind of scared me <laughs> um, and then I'll flip it onto the grill side because I just enjoy the dark grill lines these chicken pieces are pretty thin so they're only cooked for about two to three minutes I just scrape off the other side while I'm waiting for that to grill and in about two three minutes time I'll give them a turn and I generally only flip them the one time when it goes onto the grill because um, like I said it's pretty thin it doesn't need any more than that I'm still new with cooking on the grill to be honest because the fire just scares me so I always make sure Nick is by my side when I do do it but I'm getting braver so pretty happy with that and yeah like I said I just love the grill lines that is Nick's dinner all plated up and then that's mine Nick's definitely looks nicer with the tomato and his sauce on the side I don't eat tomato hence why I didn't put it on my plate but that was our dinner and it was delicious all right so this pretty much wraps up now this video I was just posing for a thumbnail so I got our seeds back out so although it all did not get done in the one day like I was anticipating, it still got done. So little, little accomplishment yesterday with the seeds and kind of big one. Like it was nice, quick and easy, not too annoying, nothing cooking. But the fact now dinner is all done and prepared, we'll just grill up the chicken. Um, and we got sauces to last us for the rest of the month and five bags of our chicken to go into the freezer so this one doesn't have a date this will go in the fridge now thank you my love he's just standing by the fridge to pop this all back for me we are eager to get out onto the beach um so yeah thank you so much for watching this video i hope you guys enjoyed if you did please give it a big thumbs up and this one baby thank you subscribe down below so you don't miss out my future videos i'll see you guys next time bye